Right, we're ready for another start there. This is race nine, the intermediate trophy, and already a flyer from that looks like uh, Neil Chapel there. Got a good break on the field as we still see a puddle of water there going in towards uh, turn one. I've been to Manfield for years. I don't think I've ever seen water lay on the track in that position. It's possibly about uh, three quarters of a metre wide now after the uh, concrete wall there in pit lane, and uh, it was a bit, bit bigger before, but uh, everyone seems to be coping with it, and right now it is Neil Chapel out the front. That'll be uh, Todd Ackroyd there in third place, and in between him is uh, Richard Markham Barrett there on the uh, Speed Junkie NSR 300 2 so twin, and uh, he's actually closing in on uh, Neil Chapel. Neil Chapel, I think, had the fastest laps earlier on, in the race today. Somewhere along Richard Markham Barrett may have uh, done that, but uh, a change of position there for third spot. Uh, I mentioned it was Todd Ackroyd there. Uh, that's got to be Roger Cathrew that's gone through there and passed him. He must have had a bit of a difficult start there, but that position has changed again, so Ackroyd went into there quicker. And um, Oh, no, sorry, that's another bike coming across Todd Ackroyd. Uh, could be uh, Uriah Reich in there. We'll wait till the start finish line and just try and pick up who's who. Um, still still recognising the colours, it's the first race meeting of the year for this season for me, part of this uh, class, my 13th weekend away so far this weekend, uh, yeah pretty well everything's been motorcycling orientated, everything indeed, I was at for a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the Bears, sound of, Central Sound of Thunder here, Central Thunder meeting a uh, weekend before and sort of lots of it going on, so uh, but this is the first time I've seen some of these bikes and still trying to work out who's who and uh, who's out on the track and who's not. It's, uh... Oh, sorry, that's my phone. I've just pulled it out. I'll put it upside down so you can't hear it. I don't know how to cancel it. Customers trying to ring you on a Sunday and expect you wanting to jump up and do things when they don't need it done. Uh, that's right, that's self-employment for you. Back to what's happening on the track. And Richard Barkham Barrett has uh, set the fastest lap in lap one. He would have been coming off the uh, front row of the grid. I uh, don't quite have those right bits of piece of paper here. What have we got? We've got Intermediate Trophy. Intermediate Trophy, yeah. Uh, actually, he wouldn't have been coming off the front row. He would have been seventh, so he would have been off the second row. Uh, but we'll see after this lap who's the quickest round. And uh, both those guys uh, leading in the 19s, uh, 19621 and 19959. But don't forget that those people have done it on their first lap. Um, so they'll be the standing start. So we're now into the 15 mark and Chappie. A 115 745, a 115 for Mark and Barrett. Uh, a small gap between them on the start finish line. Uh, not much between them of course. Like I said there's probably less than 0.2 of a second. Uh, but right now it is the NSR. The uh, black and uh, orange machine has got a little bit through the infield there as we see uh, him etching into the lead of Neil Chappell. Uh, Neil will be looking over his shoulder, working out where he is. He wants to race, win this race, but of course, the slowest time possible. We've got six laps to go, so uh, he'll be keeping the hammer down. Conditions getting a little bit warmer. It'll be interesting to see what the best lap time is now compared with the uh, earlier race in the day. I've just got it here, the Intermediate Trophy. We had the 17s. We we're in the 17s for the best time. We're now nearly two seconds quicker already in the race, a 1.15.745, so definitely the track drying a bit. There's still, uh, from where my vantage point is, I can't see any standing water on the track. There might be a little bit of a stream dribbling across, maybe over in Higgins. We had water dribbling across the track going into Turn 1 in Toyota earlier on the day, but uh, that all seems to have dried up. There's still the damp patches uh, uh, here to there, you know, uh, in the S's there were quite a few earlier on, but just about all gone, so expect lap times to drop during the day. We saw uh, Glenn Skatchew out on the um, ZX10 uh, testing it during the lunchtime, and he went into the 7s, I think, with a 17899. That's his, uh, I think it's probably his first time on that bike, and uh, that's the super bike that Horse Saiga rode to the, the Suzuki Series last year, so that's Kawasaki ZX10, so already not official because it was in the uh, just practicing but went into the one sevens we've seen one nines here in, with the six seven five triumphs and that sort of thing so chappy out there on the mid speed 650 er6 i think i think this is a twin cylinder bike i had a look at it uh, in the pits and we had to listen to it, and I think this is the ER6 650. And what a beautiful job the Mead Speed exhaust pipe is on titanium. And there's something about that and the skill of uh, 
of Meads speed uh, to weld up that and just make it a beautiful piece of work and, and this stuff this stuff works as well because uh, Mead speed is it's well uh, the name's been around for a while it's not always been the young fella uh, at the head of the uh, company but uh, right now it seems he is and he's putting out good products and just just art just absolute art all right we're now down into the 15s with a 15693 for neil chapel a 15950 for um richard mark and barrett that uh that were both on that last lap on lap four. Roger Castro's floating around there in the uh, 15s as well. In fact, he's second quickest here with a 15.852, and there he is in third place going through that left-hander in the S's into the right-hander there on the uh, TSS Red Baron-sponsored uh, Yamaha R450. They started life as a 600cc four-cylinder bike. Somehow, the people disable one of those cylinders and turn them into a 450 and these have been pretty good at the New Zealand Superbike Championships in the Superlight class with uh, uh, a number of them winning the uh, class. I think the same bike, Greg Percival's bike won, not this year, but the last two years won the uh, Superlight Championship uh, and that is a Yamaha and uh, was out there this year in the hands of Christophori but uh, Christophori being a bit of an animal this season had a lot of crashes, three crashes at Taupo and didn't get to win the title but uh, certainly a hot uh, product out there the 600's converted into a 450cc triple okay lap times wise the last lap is uh, it still is Neil Chapel, 0.3 of a second quicker on the track than his opponent out there main opponent Richard Mark and Barrett there we are coming across uh, back markers with three laps to go CTAS live timing who's, who's actually doing this this class it is the Intermediate trophy, and it is CTAS is the main sponsor. Blue flag out there, blue light out there at uh, the hairpin, indicating to a uh, lap rider that he's about to get, uh, or he or she is about to get uh, jumped upon. Understand it was a, uh, there was a fairly full day yesterday here at Enfield for the, um, the 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 uh, trick day. Uh, I think most of the rounds here when the Vic Club uh, Winter Series are on, the Bridgestone Winter Series, they will be having a track day the day before, and um, it's a good way to come along and just, uh, uh, well, if nothing else, if you're a road rider and you want to get out there, there's certainly a lot of races that are prepping for the uh, second day of racing, or the, the, the race day for this series. Um, we'll be around the pits and be able to help you with uh, set up on your bike and just have a track and chat with them and do what's going on. Okay, the gap is closed up here. 1.470 seconds. It's now down to less than half of that. 0.655 seconds. So Markham Barrett is now uh, closed up the gap. He was 0.8 of a second quicker in that last lap right now. That's enough if he continues the same lap time there, providing he finds a place to pass. Um, he could take the lead here. In saying that, Chappie will just possibly have to sit down there and think, well, I can hear someone on my tail. I've got to up the ante in that. And he's got a bit more up his sleeve being um, in the uh, 115 mark as well. So Castro, still very respectable time there in third place with no one to chase. Really, it's 150, maybe 200 metres off in front of him and a similar distance behind, but putting down some consistent uh, lap times on the number 24 machine there in third, still in the high 15s. Let's have a talk about who else is out on the track. Been no changes really in the last lap. Uriah Riken, Todd Ackwood, Colin Terry, and Chance Oliver Stevens uh, are the, wound up the top seven. Chris Beams has moved forward there and got ahead of Rob Edwards. Chris Beams riding in the number 17 machine with Rob Edwards on the uh, number 50 machine. Ken Jeston and David Johnson there in 10th and 11th place. I see a uh, DNF for Kendall Dunlop. I saw someone coming into the pit. So, uh, hello, we've got someone down there on the infield there. Uh, down there on the uh, left hander there and walking away from their bike I think that is number 38 maybe 36 chance Oliver Stevenson it looks like it possibly his bike but the important thing is he is wandering away from it all so the white flag I think is out yes indeed the white flag is out it's the last lap there those two lead bear bikes um, Chappie obviously knew that something was happening behind them and he's picked up his pace and Pope in a 115.4 compared with the 115.7 for Markham Barrett. So Markham Barrett uh, gave him the hurry up, whether he got close enough so he could look over, uh, hear the bike in behind, or whether he's uh, getting indications from pit lane, or he just looked over his shoulder, whatever, or whether he just decided, well, the last lap flag's coming up shortly. I better dig deeper and uh, get on with this race and get out there in front. 
Sorry, he's already in front, but get out there and extend his lead. So, a uh, bit of a difficult corner, that uh, left-hander in the S's today. We've had, uh, that's the second crash we've had there today. I don't think there's been too many other crashes elsewhere around the track. Young Finn Harmon from Carterton, unfortunately, crashed just just on entering the track there earlier on today as we see the chequered flag going out for Neil Chappell with uh, 47, Richard Markham Barrett there taking second place and there is Roger Castro goes through there and takes a good solid third. Long way back to uh, Uriah Riken there in fourth place with Todd Ackroyd. Now Todd Ackroyd's one of those bikes, there he is down the back.